Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm taking a look at a wallet that's been suggested on this channel more than a few times. It's the Aviator wallet, but I have their flagship model, the Titan One Rugged. Let's check it out. So the Aviator wallet arrived to me with this really nice box, really nice packaging. Then you can see the sleeve here, it says Aviator Ultimate Slim Wallet. So we take that off and check out the design here. It's actually pretty nice, all these little A's. So now let's open this bad boy up and we have our, I'm guessing, user manual. Just a few illustrations here on how to use the wallet and you flip it to the backside. Just a little story about their mission, how to adjust the elastic, which I wanna show you shortly, and RFID protection. Let me put all this to the side and Check this out, Aviator wallet still in the box. So as I mentioned before, this is the Aviator Titan One Rugged, and check this out. Comes with a little T5 Torx screwdriver. This is pretty common nowadays with modern wallets. You see that all the time, and that's to adjust all these stainless steel screws that line the frame. But I'll get to that a little later on in this video. So let's talk about a few features of this Titan One Rugged wallet. So the front and the back plate here are made from grade one titanium. That's right, so if you guys know anything about titanium, grade one is about 200 times more expensive than crude steel. That being said, it is stronger than steel at half the weight. Now right here lining this titanium plate are all stainless steel bolts. They're attached to the frame right there. There's also two different choices of frames. You have an acrylic glass, which I have right here and they also offer an aluminum space frame for an extra charge. I flip it to the back side and we have this titanium plate here. Now this plate here actually has a function. It's actually used as a topper for the coin holder. That's right, the Aviator wallet does come with the coin holder. So you have your choices of an aluminum coin holder or this one right here carbon fiber. Or you can choose not to have this in there at all. It's up to you. Then getting back to the plate here, on the bottom here you can see it says Aviator Titan One Rugged Edition. Then if I get in a little closer, it's numbered number 256. How awesome is that? So if you guys choose to go with the Titan One Rugged, it automatically comes with this carbon fiber money clip on this elastic band. They also have that nice A logo right here on the money clip. That's a nice touch. Now when you buy the Aviator wallet, you're gonna have three different choices of card capacity. It can either hold one to seven cards, four to 11 cards, or seven to 20 cards. And that's all going to depend on how you have this elastic set up on the frame. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about a little later on. All right guys, let's talk dimensions. This Aviator wallet is exactly the same size as a credit card. So a credit card measures 3.37 inches long by 2.125 inches high. So in millimeters, that's 85.6 by 53.98. So being made of titanium, I'm guessing you guys are wondering how much it weighs. So let's check that out right now. All right, so I took the card out of there so it doesn't affect our weight test. And tear it out and drop it on. All right, weighs exactly two ounces. And switch that to grams weighs 56 grams. So two ounces, that's extremely light for this wallet. In fact, holding it, it's really light. And that's with the coin holder in there. If you guys don't want that coin holder, you take that right out and weigh it again. So it's 44 grams and 1.6 ounces. So this is actually the first time I got to check out the Aviator wallet and it's pretty interesting. So every single minimalist wallet that I've tested in the past are very, very similar in design, but they always have the cards come up to the top here. So that's what makes this Aviator wallet pretty unique. So if I give you guys a nice little close up here, the cards go in this little slot right there, right under the frame. You can see that bevel. So that bevel right there is gonna make it really nice and easy to just slide cards right in. So we just push up on the thumb slot on the front and you guys can get a nice look at it right there. So when Aviator sent this over to me to review, they said this is already set up to hold between four and 11 cards. So right here I have 11 cards. So checking this out, it looks like the easiest way to get the cards in there all at once is just pry it open right from the top here and then just stick them all in at once as so. So there we go. Now we have 11 cards here in the Aviator wallet and it looks like we still have some room 
on this elastic. I just don't want to keep pushing it because I don't want to stretch this out too much. So I'm sure you guys have noticed already that the elastic stretches from top to bottom as opposed to left to right. And then on the other side here, there's no piece of elastic or anything holding these cards in or acting like a stopper. So when you push the cards in, you do have the ability to maybe over push as so because like I said, there's nothing holding these cards in except for the elastic that's wrapping top to bottom. But honestly, I can't see that being a problem. I've used wallets like this before without any kind of stopper on each side or stoppers on the bottom. You just put them in and the elastic holds them in pretty nicely. So how easy is it to get these cards out of here? Well, we have this nice big thumb slot. All we have to do is just press up with your thumb cards slide right out. Now obviously it's going to be really easy to get this top card out, maybe even the top two or three, but what about all the cards in the middle or the cards in the back? Well this is what I've been doing, pushing these cards up from the bottom as so and then just grabbing a hold of them. Now when you do that, it might take that coin case with you. So it might be a little fidgety trying to get all the cards out at once, so I just push that back in, bring them all out, and then I can fan them as so. So then getting a card out of the middle, super easy, putting a card back in the middle and then just straightening them all back out and then pushing them back in. So if there is one small complaint that I have about this design is getting the cards out of the middle because there's no thumb notch here or anything. The only notch is right here at the top, but that can be problematic if we have that coin case in there. Normally I would just pull these cards out as so and it's pretty easy, but then you're grabbing that coin case. If this coin case wasn't here, it's super easy. Just pull them out and then fan. But if you do want this coin compartment, it's just something that you have to try to work around. It's not a huge deal breaker. All you have to do is just push up from the bottom, push that coin compartment back down and grab your cards. So let's check out this coin compartment for a second. I'm just going to take it right out of the wallet. So if I give you guys a closer look at it, so we have this really nice felt material on the bottom. So if I do put a coin in there, it feels like it's not just going to rattle all around or make too much noise because if it was just on plain carbon fiber on the bottom, it would slide around like crazy. At least with this felt on the bottom, it does give it some kind of texture. So there we go. We have four coins in this coin compartment and it looks like we have room for a couple more dimes. So obviously with coins in there, it's going to rattle around and make some noise even with that felt in there. But I'm sure if you guys are outside of the US and are used to carrying coins, you're used to that rattling noise. And now I'm sure you see why we need this top plate here to cover up that coin compartment. Now that there's coins in this coin compartment, you can see See the importance of being very careful pushing these cards up from the bottom and taking that coin compartment with you because yeah, that could happen. But like I said, that is not a deal breaker if you're very careful. All you have to do is press up and then push the coins back like that, push them out, and then fan. All right, so what if you're a cash carrier? I have eight bills right here. So let's try to stuff them under the cash strap right here. I'm gonna fold these into quarters, lift up on the cash strap and slide it in there as so. So there you go, eight bills, not a problem fitting under that cash strap. But I also took out all those cards. So let's put back in seven cards because that's what I carry. Lift that back in, slide them in as so. Yeah, not a problem at all. Seven cards, eight bills. Boom. And I really like their thought process on this cash strap because let me take this out here. So if I move this titanium plate down a little bit, there's some felt right there. So that's going to help keep the cash in place while it's under this cash strap. Not only that, it's going to keep this plate in place from sliding around and not exposing your coins that might be in your coin compartment. So let's talk about those three choices of card capacity. That's all going to depend on where you have the elastic on your frame. So to get to that frame, all we have to do is take our T5 screwdriver here, loosen all these stainless steel bolts up, and basically what we're going to see is this right here. So inside right here, I have the acrylic glass. This one is the aluminum space frame. So this is how this works. Take the elastic, put it on the back side here, and basically it's what you see right here. So we have these four slots on the top, four slots on the bottom, and on the elastic here, we have these little metal rods. So to adjust the tension, all we have to do is lay those little metal rods in the grooves here. And let me get this in there as so. So there you go, see how nice they fit in there? That's the one and seven card capacity. And then all we have to do is loosen one up and put it right there, it loosens it up a little bit. That's four to 11. And then if we want the max seven to 20 cards, all we have to do is go to the outside grooves and there we go. There's our seven to 20 card capacity. So this is a pretty nice design by Aviator. Um, and plus it makes it really easy if something happens to your elastic, if it stretches too much, gets frayed, if it breaks. And if I give you a closer look at this aluminum frame, those holes right there, that's where you're gonna put 
the top plate. So obviously this isn't something you're gonna do every day. Just set the elastic where you want, right there in the grooves and leave it there. And then for whatever reason, if you need more space, just take the screws out adjust the elastic, put it back together, and that's it. All right, guys, heading over to the website, you can see right here the Titan One Rugged is 299 euros. So in US dollars, that equals out to be $327. Yes, it's a little pricey, but remember, we're talking about grade one titanium here. So the only thing that's gonna change the price of this wallet is if you go from standard to aluminum coin holder, that's 314 euros. That equals out to be $343.39, or, what I have here, the carbon fiber card holder, which comes out to be 369 euros, which equals out to be $403.54 American. All right, so stick with me here, guys. So the acrylic glass frame, which I have already in this wallet, uh, doesn't change the price at all. But if I go to the aluminum space frame, bumps it to 429 euros, which equals out to be $469.15 American. So obviously with the price of this wallet, this is absolutely the most expensive wallet I have ever reviewed on this channel, even surpassing the Damascus Steel Ridge Wallet. That one is at 299 bucks. But of course we can get the standard Aviator Wallet, much less expensive at 49.90 euros. And there's a couple different choices to choose from. So head over to the website and check this out. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think of the Aviator Titan One Rugged? So Aviator set out to make an extremely premium wallet and I think they've succeeded. Yes, this is by far the most expensive wallet that I've ever reviewed on this channel and I thank Aviator for sending this over to me to review. Otherwise, I would never have my hands on this thing. But whichever model you choose, the aluminum, the carbon fiber, or titanium, they're all basically the same design. Then you have your choice of different materials with the frame, coin holder, and yes, even the money clip. If you guys wanna check out Aviator for yourself, I'll leave Leave a link in my description box below but if you guys did enjoy this video please give me that thumbs up please subscribe and go